there's already a million videos out there telling you what to look for in a guitar. You know, making sure the strings are easy to press, making sure it stays in tune, uh, keeping it within your price range, and so on and so forth. Well, in this lesson, I will discuss all of that with you, but what I really want to do is prepare you to step into a guitar store and come out with the exact guitar that you were meant to have. I want to show you the exact things that you can do when you walk into the store so that you feel comfortable and you look like you know what you're talking about. And you know, usually the staff at any guitar store are going to be as helpful as possible, but the more informed you are, the easier it's going to be for everybody and the better the end result will be. So the first thing I want to do is show you this simple G chord. Now you might be thinking like, why am I learning the chord? Shouldn't I buy the guitar first? Well, if you memorize this one thing, when you step into the guitar store, you'll be able to put your fingers on the guitar in a way that matters. You're not just going to doodle around randomly, but you'll be doing something that you'll actually be doing with it once you take it home and start learning guitar. So this is going to be really quick and easy to learn. You have your chord hand, and that's the one that presses the fretboard. It's usually your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, your chord hand is your left hand. Now, you start with your ring and pinky finger, or your third and fourth fingers, and those go on the thinnest strings at the third fret. One, two, three. You just count the boxes, and it doesn't really matter if you get it right. You just need to put your finger somewhere on the guitar. You're putting your ring finger on the third fret of the second thinnest string, and your pinky finger on the third fret of the thinnest string, and you're just going to put them in that box and you want to put them as close to the fret as you can get. And then you're going to put your middle finger on the third fret of the thickest string. And being able to make this simple chord shape will give you some idea of how the guitar is going to feel. You know, whether the strings are too high and hard to press, that would be called high action and that's the number one thing that anyone's going to mention when giving you advice on buying your first guitar. You want to look for a guitar that has good action and that means the strings are high enough that they don't buzz, you know they ring clearly, but they're low enough that they're easy to press and that you can press them without really forcing it. Now I think that memorizing this G chord is how you're going to do that. You're going to step into the store and you're going to think, okay, third fret on the top two strings using my last two fingers. Then I'm going to put my middle finger on the third fret of the thickest string. And that's all you're going to do. You're going to press down those strings. And you're going to do that on a few guitars. Do it on some really expensive ones because, you know, they're probably going to feel great. And then you can see out of the cheaper ones or the ones that are more in your price range, which ones are the most similar to that. You know, this is a good test because if you can press it right away, even as an absolute beginner who's never pressed down the strings before, that means it's an easy guitar to play. You know, you're not supposed to push that hard. Now, the next thing to check is the intonation or how well the guitar stays in tune and how in tune each fret is. And to test the intonation, I want you to own a digital tuner, you know, one of those ones that you can just clip on to the end of the guitar to check the tuning, or at the very least, have an app on your phone. In my opinion, the clip-on tuners are one of the most essential tools for a beginning guitarist. You know, I would get one before I even buy a guitar, you know, or you could even ask them to lend you one in the store. And to tune your guitar, that's a whole thing, and we do not need to get into it. All we need to do is you're going to write down on a piece of paper these six letters. You're going to write down E, A, D, G, B, E. Those are the names of the strings. So when you pluck each string, that's the note that the tuner is supposed to say. The thickest string is E, then A, D, and so on. Now, you ask the man or the woman at the guitar store, hey, can you tune this guitar, please? And they'll tune it for you. Then you take your tuner. You can either buy one, use your phone, or ask them if they have one. You put the tuner on the end of the guitar. You pluck the string. And then you take a look at the tuner. 
and it should look like this perfectly in tune you know there's always some fancy thing that says hey i'm in tune and if it's not well it means they didn't tune it 100 percent thoroughly or the guitar isn't tuning easily and that's not necessarily a bad sign but you know it should say hey i'm in tune anyways the guitar is probably going to be in tune and you're going to go up to the 12th fret and to find the 12th fret it's usually where there's double dots some guitars have different inlays that's what these little things are they're like little fret markers that tell you where the higher frets are there's always something different at the 12th fret so for that same string you're going to press the 12th fret lightly and you know press it the best you can you pluck the string and then you see how in tune it is and you can see here my open string is perfectly in tune but when i pluck the 12th fret and i'm just gently pressing it it's a little bit out and that means that this guitar could use a little bit of work and this is a, actually an expensive guitar you know so it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect for a guitar to be like absolutely perfect we're talking you either get really lucky with a budget guitar or you're spending a lot of money my a string perfectly in tune i go up to the 12th fret i lightly press it and we're a little bit off we're a little bit sharp but that's also because if you press too hard, see how sharp it goes if I press too hard? So that's why we're lightly pressing it. When I lightly press it, it's a tiny bit sharp, but it's pretty much spot on. My D string, open, in tune, 12th fret, perfectly in tune. If the dial is off center by, you know, more than one or two ticks, the intonation is a little poor. You know, it can be adjusted, but with acoustic guitars, that requires a little bit of work to adjust, and you'd probably be better off finding one that's really close right away. You know, I'm using roughly a $3,000 guitar right here, and that's what I get. And, you know, we could try this. I have a $300 guitar, and on this guitar, thickest string is in tune, go up to the 12th fret, a little bit flat, but it's pretty close. A string, perfectly in tune. Dead on. You know, this is a pretty good guitar because I actually did bring a tuner to the store all those years ago when I purchased it. You know, I'd been playing electric guitar for a few months and I decided I want to get into acoustic. And I, you know, I may have looked like a nerd pulling out my tuner and, and testing it, but I came out with a pretty solid, cheap guitar. You know, comparing it to the other guitar, the intonation is almost the same. Either way, those are the two most important tests. Is the guitar easy to play? And does it tune well and stay in tune when you go further up the neck? That's the intonation. Now, the remaining tests are kind of subjective. You know, there's the overall sound of the guitar, how the guitar feels in your arms, and how affordable the guitar is. As far as the sound of the guitar, this is a total preference thing and there's really nothing that i can teach you you just find something that sounds good to you some guitars sound full some sound thin some sound too bassy and the best way to try it out is to get the person at the store to play it for you i would say hey can you please strum some chords on this and then listen and then say could you please do some finger picking on this or whatever it is that you'd like to be doing with the guitar if you're not into finger style ask them to do something that you see yourself doing with the guitar and then i would stand about six feet or two meters in front of the performance because when you're right above the guitar you can't really hear it the same as the audience would hear it you know so you act like an audience member and you listen to the guitar from a couple meters away and you know Maybe it's a good idea to go over the person's shoulder and uh, see what it sounds like from your perspective because you're going to be hearing it from that angle the most. You know, So you could even go yourself, grab the guitar, and just pluck a few strings. You know, just strum it open. Maybe try pressing something down. You, know, you won't be able to play anything on it, but it's still good to try. Now, when it comes to the feel of the guitar, like how it feels in your arms, just try a few guitars in, their, in your hands. You know, one of them will feel different than the others. There's ones with really big bodies. There's ones with really small bodies. And different things are comfortable to different people based on your own physiology. Find one where 
when you put the guitar upright in your lap and without looking down at the fretboard, you know, it feels good. You know, the neck should be up a little bit and you want it to just sit there. You know, you just rest your strumming arm on top of the guitar and it just stays put. You know, you're going to want to sit up straight when you're playing guitar. So make sure you're sitting up straight. You're in a comfortable position with your feet firmly planted on the ground and that you're seated in a way that you're probably going to be seated at home. You know, and then maybe even try that G chord out and just do that with a few guitars to get a feel for it. And I always like to try the really expensive guitars just to really have an idea of what it could be like. And chances are you will find one more in your budget that does fit a lot of these criteria. Finally, you'll want to ask yourself if this guitar is affordable to you. And affordability means different things to different people. Sometimes it's worth it to spend a bit more and get a better instrument. With acoustic guitars, you aren't going to get a solid wood top until you spend a few hundred bucks. You know, that's really the first major breakthrough in quality. The cheapest acoustics will have laminate tops and once you hit a certain price point, they'll start having solid tops, which will produce a nicer tone and retain more of their resale value. Aside from that, you are going to get what you pay for. Even cheap instruments are made to really high standards these days. And if they pass the first two tests, you know, they feel good to play and the intonation is good. It's a good guitar. So that's my guide for looking like you know what you're doing when you walk into the store to buy your first guitar, you know. Now, if you didn't write down those five steps, I have them all in a nice little worksheet as part of my free ebook. It's completely free for all my subscribers. I'll put a link in the corner and down below. You can download it and use it not only to find your first guitar, but also to learn how to play it. Aside from that, I wish you luck. And if you have any questions, please ask in the comments down below.